What is up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're going to be tying up a parachute emerger. I'm adding poly in there because we're using a new material by Semperfly calling uh, floating poly yarn. But let's go ahead and get started. This is a D uh, si size 16 hook uh, by Stealth Hooks. D stands for dry series and this is the uh, Semperfly in an A dot uh, wax thread. I'm going to go ahead and start this right behind the eye with a little bit of spacing between the eye and where I started my thread. Um, that way later we'll have a little bit of room to close this fly off and I'm laying down a little bit of a thread base for the foam cylinder we're going to be using. This is um, a foam cylinder. I think it's a uh, two-tone foam. It's got a white and here's the cutter I'm using. It's about the same size as the hook gap on here and I'm going to go ahead and just go real slow to start it and then make sure that my fingers not on the other side and go out and through and there we go. We just cut out a foam cylinder that quick uh, these uh, foam cylinder cutters are pretty sharp and the foam seems to be pretty good so I either pull it out by the end there um, or you can use your bodkin and poke it out through that little hole I've seen guys also wet it um, but I don't do that and for this size, size 16, I'm going to trim a little bit of that white off the white seems to just give me a little bit more visibility and so I'll go ahead and do a couple loose wraps there making sure to leave that gap between the hook eye and where I'm binding down this foam and then now I'm going to kind of zigzag this through this mess and condense that foam with some nice tight wraps, trying to keep it on the top of the shank to the best of my ability. And that's why we laid down that thread base before. And then I'll cut off the tag end of the taper and X through that so that I kind of taper it off a little bit. But I'm going to be butting in our materials later. And I want to make sure I've got a spacing underneath uh, so we can do a whip finish. I'm going to put in some ribbing. This is Semperfly Gold Tinsel and it's in uh, small and we're just going to cut off about a three to four inch piece. If you're going to be tying up multiple, you know, cut off a six to eight inch piece. It's easier sometimes to work with a longer piece and I'll just tie that in right there at the rear um, section of my bend of the, of the hook shank and then I'll work it right into the bend, the top of the bend and then advance my thread back up and we'll get that out of the way. Now, to even out this body, we're going to be using uh, this uh, floating poly yarn, hence the poly emerger. And this is a molted gray. Really, really awesome. Looks uh, almost like an Adams, uh, uh, parachute Adams color to me. And so I'm going to fasten this down with a little pinch wrap right there where we ended our foam. And then I'll wrap it back, not quite all the way to where I ended the gold on the bend, but give myself a little bit of spacing. And then I'll advance my thread up to the edge of the foam uh, cylinder. And I'll take my uh, floating poly yarn now and just give it a little bit of a tight wrap here on the first wrap just to kind of help minimize the bulk back there. And then I'll just palmer this up uh, with touching wraps. And this stuff, uh, look at that, that's just uh, awesome, awesome body material. And you'll notice I'm not going to do an extra wrap like you would think. I want to leave a little bit of room here and I don't want to crowd it is what I found to be a trick so that we can um, get our hackle on there pretty easy. And then I'll just rib this uh, tinsel the opposite way, giving it a little hot spot at near the butt here because this is an emerger fly, so this will be down. Um, in the uh, the water and visible so I want it to be kind of a hey look at me um, I'm either annoying or I look tasty so um, that's what we're going for by adding this uh, this tinsel and so then as I get up here I'll do a couple wraps right here and this is kind of the underneath for our uh, our dry fly hackle we're going to be putting on and we'll just snip that out and you can see this is a little bit of a meaty body. That poly yarn is, uh, is a, not the thinnest material, but it, I don't think it uh, is going to deter any trout from taking it and uh, thinking it's a nice snack and end up with a free lip piercing. So the next step is we're going to use some Whiting Farm. This is a midge uh, saddle or uh, uh, with a, it's a half saddle and it's in Grizzly. I love Grizzly. And this is a really, really good uh, piece of hackle. I've uh, already been tying some up, and I'm just going to take it and prep the end here. Just peel off a little bit of the fibers, exposing about an eighth of an inch. And the key is we want to show off that grizzly, so you got to think this fly is going to be riding with that foam up. And so I want this uh, grizzly to be facing downward, so it kind of cups um, upward, if you would. And I'll just secure that and I'm kind of cleaning up that underbody so it's nice and clean. And then we are going to just palmer this around 
and you can spend all day making this fancy and um, looking clean but the fish seem to just the worse off it looks almost the better in my opinion um, some of the worst looking uh, parachutes I've ever done are the ones that I've caught the most fish on so we're just going to polymer this up I want to get about three or four um, kind of touching dense wraps here and then as I come up and around whichever is more comfortable from you for you um, on how to tie off your hackle I'm going to um, basically hold this hackle upward and bring my thread up and over and trap it down on the other side and then I will pull tightly and do a wrap on the other side of it and now it's binded fast in there and I'll do another wrap behind and that is the three wrap that hackle is pinched in there but the key is I'm not going to trim the stem flush down I'm gonna leave a little bit out that foam heads not going to deter it's not gonna prick the fish's mouth or be an annoyance but it's going to allow that thread to keep that uh, hackle nice and secure in there and so now comes the hard part this is I like you could whip finish up and over the film cylinder but I want to pop that foam up and so I'm going to come in here and do some nice clean wraps underneath I'm going to do one more because I got a little bit of a fiber here that's annoying me and so uh, we've got a midge whip finisher here and this is where it gets really fun you could half hitch it and use a tool but I'm going to do a three turn whip finish here and be super super careful getting it in there nice and tight not to have your wraps go over the eye and you can see where this wax thread didn't quite slide as nice as I'd like but um, it's gonna hold it really really nice so um, we'll go ahead and do another three turn whip finish because I'm not going to put any um, head cement or resin on here um, so if you're if you're gonna do that you don't need to do the second one heck you could even put a little super glue on and uh, when you wrap the hackle um, or tie off the hackle you could just let that super glue absorb in and be done but we did a, a double three turn wet finish there I'll go ahead and trim that out and you can see um, not the best looking fly but it is going to float we got the foam to support it it's going to ride like an emerger we're going to see how this uh, poly yarn I was mainly going for the color but uh, it may float the first couple casts and hopefully it will uh, ride like an emerger and right down the water column like this might even throw could potentially throw a dropper off this uh, if it's a small one unweighted but look at that grizzly just looks beautiful so tie some up hopefully they pierce some lips for you and have fun tying it mm -hmm.